This is for exercise 5F and S1, uh, mutually exclusive and independent events in probability. Okay, now I'm going to be recording the audio and the video at the same time uh, for this video, so bear with me. Um, so, first of all, let's look at uh, mutually exclusive events. Okay, now mutually exclusive events are basically ones that have no intersection. Okay, so they have nothing in common. So, the event picking a diamond and picking a club in a pack of playing cards, for example, would be mutually exclusive events because there's no one card, let's say diamond, and a club. Okay, so if we were to draw this as a Venn diagram, uh, we'd have something like uh, this. Okay, so uh, let's call event A is picking a diamond and event B is picking a club. Okay, then all it means is there would be no intersection between the two. They'd both be two separate um, uh, circles or sets. Okay, so this gives us um, a formula basically. So therefore, in um, a question where I'm dealing with two mutually exclusive events, the probability of the union between them would be um, probability of A plus the probability of B. We don't have to worry about that formula from um, earlier in the chapter um, where we'd have had to take away the intersection because, because they're mutually exclusive, um, there is no interse intersection. So we just add that probability and add that probability to get us that result um, there, okay? So that's a result or condition if we have mutually exclusive uh, events. And this is known as the addition rule. Okay, um, independent events then are ones which have absolutely no effect on each other. So the outcome of one event um, does not influence the um, effect or the outcome of the other event, okay? So if we think of the um, conditional probability um, that we've been looking at recently, that would mean if we had two events A and B and they're independent of each other, that means the probability of A happening is going to be exactly the same whether or not B has happened, because yeah, B is irrelevant, because A and uh, B is having no effect on A and A is having no effect on B. So therefore, if in a independent um, event, if I wanted to work out the probability of A given that B is happening, um, well, that's going to be basically just the probability of A, because B is having no effect on um, that outcome. Okay, so therefore, if we use the um, formula for conditional probability, uh, which we looked at in the previous lesson, so we know that probability of A given B is equal to the probability of A intersection B divided by the probability of B, okay? Um, we know then from uh, this statement up here, because they're independent, um, B is having no effect on A, so the probability of A, given the B has happened, is just probability of A. So we can change this to probability of A. So it gives us this. So probability of A is equal to probability of A intersection B over probability of B. Okay, so we just shrink that very quick. Oh, just stick that to there. Give me a bit more room. Um, so then, if I rearrange this and take pro uh, probability of B across to that side, it gives me another formula, which I'm just going to pick a different colour for. Um, it gives me a formula for the intersection, which, if you remember, that's an important one to work out. For example, if you're going to make a Venn diagram or something. So, our intersection would be just probability of A multiplied by the probability of B. And that's imaginatively known as the multiplication uh, rule for independent events. Okay? So that's the multiplication rule. Okay? So for example, if you have to decide whether um, two events are independent, um, you could work out the intersection, work out probability of A and the probability of B, and if probability of A times probability of B is equal to that intersection, then you can um, decide whether they're independent or not. Right, so let's do um, some examples. Okay, so this is an example. Um, we've got two events A and B, and we're told they're independent, and we are just told that the probability of A is equal to 0 0.25, and the probability of B is equal to 0 0.2. Okay, now the hint we've got, or information we've got in this question, which is going to allow us to start 
um, drawing a Venn diagram is the fact that they're independent. So because they're independent, we know that the probability of A intersection B is going to be equal to the probability of A multiplied by the probability of B. Okay, So that is going to be uh, 0.25 times 0.2. Okay, So um, that is going to be 0 0.05. Okay, um, So once we've got that, we can now just start uh, drawing out our Venn diagram. Oh, let me just change that for a minute. Okay, that's better. So just oh, the that line's gone. Right. Um, so let's sketch out a Venn diagram then. So we've got um, our entire set. We've got our circle for A, our circle for B. Okay. We know that our intersection is going to be zero point zero five. Uh, we know that probability of B which is 0.2, so that circle is going to have to add up to 0.2, so therefore we know that is going to be 0.15. Um, similarly, uh, the set for A, that's going to have to represent 0.25, so 0.25 take away 0.05 is just going to leave us with 0.2. Okay, And while we're doing this as well, we want to work out the uh, probability that goes on the outside of A and B. So if we do uh, 0 0.2 plus uh, 0 0.05 plus 0 0.15, that's going to be 0 0.4. So we know that outside that circle we should have 0 0.6. So let's just shrink that Venn diagram over to there. And then let's just work out some um, probabilities from that. So let's say we want to work out um, I don't know, the probability of um, let's have A intersection B dash. Okay. So again, if you can't see where that um, region is on the Venn diagram, um, if you just think of it, it's going to be the intersection between A, so we know it's going to be inside A, and that's intersecting with the complement of B, so that's the outside of B, so it's inside A, but it's not in B, so it'd be that answer there, 0 0.2, okay? Uh, remember though, if you find that a little bit difficult, just go back and rely on um, the shading technique I'm just showing you there, so you can ni nice and easily locate that it's in that little crescent shape there, okay? So the answer for that one is just 0 0.2. Uh, let's try uh, another one, probability of A intersection, sorry, A complement, intersection B complement. Okay, so again, um, by now, uh, you've done so many questions, and this is quite a common one that comes up, you probably just not know where that is now. But uh, if I want it, uh, the complement of A is going to be everything outside that circle there, and then the complement of B is going to be everything outside the B circle. Okay, so where those two regions are going to overlap is going to be on the uh, region that's outside the two circles. So our answer is going to be uh, 0 0.6. Uh, so again, if you find that difficult to spot that um, area, okay, just fall back on that shading technique. So uh, in this case, if we'd have, so if I sketch out a Venn diagram down here, uh, not in A is going to be everything that's outside A. Okay, and then if I just use a different colour, everything outside of B is going to be everything outside that circle. So my region where I've got the two colours, look, is going to be outside those circles. Or, because it's the intersection, it's the area where um, both things are happening at the same time, you're looking for that cross-hatched shading, remember. Okay, um, if it was the union, then we'd just be looking at all the regions that I've shaded, so we'd be ignoring that one. Okay. Right, that should be enough to um, get you on with um, a question, alright? Um, off you go. So, so try exercise 5F, um, good luck.